Okay, in this exercise, we're going to use SAP predictive analysis um, to create a cool geo map, and we're going to use uh, latitude and longitudinal coordinates to help us with that. Okay, so I am in SAP predictive analysis right now, and I am going to be using the DMF7 um, modified Baker data set. As you remember, this is a data set about donations for a nonprofit, and we have information the year that the person donated, uh, the number of donations they made, the value of the donations, and what's interesting to us right here, we have zip code, we also have the name of the city, state, and importantly we have latitude and longitudinal coordinates. So to create a <clears throat> geographic coordinate system here, we are going to first take our city variable under the attributes, click on it here, and we're going to use this and tell SAP predictive analysis that we want to create a geographic hierarchy. And we don't want to search by names. Uh, the name system here, if we click on this, it'll scan and quickly we'll realize that it tries to match, but it really doesn't do nearly as good of a job as we would want it to, only matching a fraction of them. A lot of them are ambiguous. So, since we actually have latitude and longitudinal coordinates, we can actually just tell SAP predictive analysis what our variable is. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the actual geographic coordinates that we're going to be using instead of it having to guess. So in this case, we have our city here. We tell it that our latitude and longitudinal coordinates are latitude and longitude. We mention that it is a level type of city and the category is in fact user defined. All right, so we can select OK. Takes a little while for it to churn. Very good. Automatically creates some new uh, columns for us. It actually guesses that based on the latitude and longitude that we're actually in Nassau here for Long Beach and Locust Valley, uh, New York City, and this country, the United States. So let's go ahead and visualize uh, this. What I'm going to do here, let's take a look at, oh, I don't know, we will look at the total value of donations. So let's see, we have value donations here. We'll turn that into a measure, drops it up into our measure column. We'll take some, we'll take the summation here. And let's go to visualize. So we now have our, we have to select the correct visualization. Let's do a geo uh, choropleth chart. Now we can take our value of our donations, oops, not in our attributes, in our measures. And now, since we already grabbed our city variable here, oh, I'm sorry, in our hierarchies up here where it says custom geo, we can grab this and drop it down into our geography. And you'll see here we have a drop down menu. So we're at the highest level of aggregation right now, which is country. We could drop down into city. I'm sorry, region. And at a quick glance, we can see that California, Texas, Florida, Michigan, New York are all places where we're getting a high total value donation. Again, we're not adjusting for population size right now. So some of these findings are not particularly surprising. <clears throat> Let's go even deeper. Let's go down to our last level here, city. This is the latitude and longitudinal coordinates. We can actually zoom all the way in. Let's go Let's head into Southern California and take a look at how things are looking here. And we see some healthy variation in the donations, even if we go down into the San Diego region itself. See, San Diego had high level donations. Here's Little Mesa, we had a very small amount of donations. Oceanside moderate, so on and so forth. So we can see here how we were able to use latitude and longitudinal coordinates very easily um, to allow us to quickly generate a custom map that can be used for uh, visual analysis of geographic data.